Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, this video came recommended to me over on the Discord server and multiple people backed it up saying I should check it out. Now this is called, Is School Slowly Destroying Your Brain? This is from a popular channel called ASAP Science with nearly 11 million subscribers. And the video has 2.7 million views. All right, even though I'm a teacher, I of course was a student. So yes, I can relate. So let's see what's happening here. All right, original video is down below. Make sure you're supporting that please give this video a thumbs up if you like what's going on here and let's check this out. All right, so I'm very interested in educational philosophy, something of course we study when we become a teacher, but it's something I think we should you know, as teachers always be studying to improve the way that again, we, we organize things, how we uh, run education and improve it for, you know, everybody. So let's see what's going on. What's, what's going on with our brains here. This episode is sponsored by KiwiCo. Ooh, Dear what? school, today I want to talk about something that on the I'm surface not may seem trivial, but it's actually but a work huge one. deal, and that is school start times. Because when I tell uh, you that yes. you might not only They're be too severely early. impacting your students' mental capacity and intelligence, both in the moment and the future, but also impacting their physical and mental health, I'm not exaggerating. Let me put it bluntly. School needs to start later, at least for high school and university age students. And I don't mean later as in later in the year, I mean later as in not so freaking early in the the morning. I agree. But to understand why, we first have to understand sleep. Before a baby is even born, and up to around the first year of its life, infants spend much of their time in REM sleep, Aww, otherwise known baby. as rapid eye movement. This is a stage we dream in, and it's during this REM sleep that babies are building up huge amounts of neural networks and connections in their brain. But soon after this time period, there's a sharp decline in REM sleep and an exponential rise in deep non-REM sleep that continues to rise until around puberty. And this non-REM sleep is actually actually responsible for fine tuning our brains. Hmm. Instead of building up more and more neurons and connections, it this actually prunes and makes the brain more efficient and effective. It's basically taking the mold that early life created and sculpting it based on your life experiences and interactions. So it's, it's exercise for your brain. It's increasing your capacity to function therefore learn. I like to tell students that your brain is, it's, it's something you have to work out. It's its something, yeah, that it, it, it has to be healthy, just like any other part of your body. Um, it's something you have to exercise. You need to increase its capacity and functionality. And there's things that can do that, and there's also things that can destroy that. And studies have shown that this non-REM sleep is linked to the development of critical thinking, reasoning, and cognitive skills. Now, some of you might be screaming, reasoning skills, critical thinking in teens? And you'd be right in noticing that teens aren't exactly starts. known for these things. But ironically, the development of the brain during this non-REM increase happens from back to front. Literally, the back of the brain, which manages vision visual and spatial perception develops first, and this growth eventually makes its way to the front of the brain or the frontal lobe last, which finally enables critical and rational thought. Mm. This is why it sometimes feels that kids' brains aren't exactly working or keeping up with the rest of their development. The thing is, when non-REM is minimized or removed, things can go really wrong. In studies of mice and cats deprived of sleep, the brain development is stopped. In fact, many psychiatric disorders like schizophrenia, bipolar, and major depression are considered disorders of abnormal development. Now I already know what some of the counter, I guess you call them counter arguments, at least refutations or just the nuance of the whole starting school a little bit later thing. I want to see if they're going to present it, but if not, I have some things to share. So make sure you're staying tuned. Studies on schizophrenia in particular have shown that there is a two to three fold reduction in non-REM sleep in teenagers that suffer from it. To top it all off, teens actually need more sleep than their adult counterparts. So by the way, under diagnose schizophrenia uh, like that is also going to make people more uh, prone to conspiracies and that type of thinking. If they're not getting enough hours of sleep, then they aren't going to be getting the optimal amount of non-REM sleep, which can hamper development. Now, I know what you're asking. How does this correlate to the time that school starts? Can't teens just go to bed early like the rest of us and get a long enough sleep? And if not, what time should school be starting at? Before we get to that okay. answer, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, KiwiCo. No word of a lie, KiwiCo is one of Please. our favorite companies defining the future of play and learning at home. Every month they release a crate that 
that's designed by experts and tested by kids that teaches about science, technology, engineering, art, and math through hands-on learning. They're truly awesome to cool. experience, even as an Sounds adult, like what, because like they Mark make crates Rober for sells. all different ages through Those eight cool, different like, subscription kits lines. For kids. I, of course, love the Maker Crate, which is designed for ages 14 to 104 plus, but all uh, of them are amazing, and I've cool. had a great time playing with Whoa. so many of them with my niece and nephew. Each box comes with all the supplies you'll need for that month's make unique a project, rocket. so there's no need to run out to the store or get extra supplies. Oh, it's one. a blast every single time. Get it? A blast? Use kiwico.com slash ASAP to get your first month free, which also helps our show. I mean, bam! What more can you ask for? Learning Win -win. and supporting science creators. Again, that's kiwico.com slash ASAP for your first month free. Now, back to some sleepy science. So why does the specific time matter so much? Isn't it more relevant how much sleep kids are getting? Partially. Yes and no. The first Partially. thing you need to know is that as kids move into puberty, their circadian rhythm completely shifts. Yep. Our circadian rhythm is the yep. name given to our internal clock that controls your body's sleep-wake cycle. In other words, it helps define when you feel tired and want to sleep versus when you feel at your most alert. This rhythm is of course different for everyone. We all have our unique chronotype, which is why some people are considered early birds and others are night owls. But in general, adults sure. share a propensity to wake and sleep at roughly the same time. The thing is, one of the biggest factors defining our circadian rhythm is our age. Young kids before right. puberty not only need the most sleep, but tend to have a really early schedule. They become sleepy early in the evening and wake up earlier than adults typically. But as we hit puberty, the timing yeah, is shifted shifts. forward past even their right. parents by as much as two to four hours, meaning we want to stay up much later. I, I predict that most of you watching this, because I think I'm the same way, that same ideal, you know, alert times are definitely true. I totally agree right now. And this change is seen across all adolescents, regardless of culture or geography. Where a nine-year-old will typically fall asleep around 9 p.m., by the age of 16, that's actually often the hour of peak wakefulness. Asking a yeah. teenager to go to bed at 10 p.m. That's is like that, I agree. That's that's when I'm the most alert. I mean, literally, it's about when I'm filming this video. I like to work. I like to work on my like YouTube stuff later in the night, in the even the evening, in 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 the night. I, I, I don't know, I feel better and more motivated than I do uh, in the afternoons and, and, and the mornings. I don't know, it's just, I, I have more energy, I guess. I'm, I think I'm still in that, that teenage brain. <laughs> Asking an adult to go to sleep at 7 p.m. In the same vein, oh. waking up at 7 a.m. for a teen is the same as waking up around 4 a.m. for an adult. And I'm pretty sure all of us all don't want to be seen at 4 a.m., let alone have to use our brains at 4 a.m. A lot of parents believe that teens are making a conscious decision to stay up later and that if they just went to bed earlier, they wouldn't be so tired. But when you get it, you can get used to waking up early there, but what's going to happen is you're also going to get tired around important times like in school. So maybe you get up and the best thing you can do if you you know need to get up is to exercise because that's going to get you going um, but if you don't and you just get up early just for the sake of getting up early uh, you're probably going to get tired around lunchtime like really tired and then you know how unproductive it is to work after like lunchtime so you've got that food in you but you're also getting tired because you ate and because it's that time of day where you know that like early afternoon that's when you feel drained don't you guys feel like that i know for me that's that's how it is too the truth is even if they do go to bed earlier chances are they'll just be lying in bed awake until their body naturally winds down but well and especially because of there are things that are keeping our brains more active um, kids do screen time you know up until they're they're asleep they usually fall asleep in front of screens which keeps brain activity high and is going to keep you from a more restful sleep so there are other factors at play here um, we know and that's part of it the best thing you can do for yourself is to get rid of all of that kind of high sensory activity about an hour before you want to go to bed you got to get uh, rid of that stuff you got to turn off screen stuff that again is high intensity high sensory and do something else uh, maybe it's it's read a book or you know something that's less sensory driven not embracing this biological timing on top of the fact that teens need more sleep to begin with risks developmental brain abnormalities and mental illness and we have experimental evidence to show it later start times increase class attendance reduce behavioral and psychological problems and decrease substance and alcohol abuse longer sleep is directly correlated to better grades in teens across the board and higher iqs and studies on identical 
twins show that by the age of 10, the twin with the longer sleep pattern has superior intellectual abilities with more expansive vocabulary too. And school there's, there's been a study about that. Like <laughs> which scientists were like taking teens, you know, like twins or whatever and like doing this. They're like, all right, you are going to stay up late and you are going to go to bed early. Like that sucks. <laughs> Schools that have tested later start times have seen a huge shift. A school in Minnesota that changed from a 7.25 a.m. start to 8.30 a.m. found that verbal SAT scores rose by over 150, while math SAT scores went up by over 50. And while we've talked about the importance of non-REM quality sleep in young adults, that's not to say REM sleep isn't also really important. Studies in the 1960s that deprived young adults of REM found that by the third day of extreme deprivation, participants started to exhibit signs of psychosis. They were anxious, moody, and I'm not surprised by any of and this. became paranoid. REM also becomes longer yeah. and more prominent in the later parts of your sleep, meaning if you cut your sleep short, you're disproportionately yeah. impacting the amount of REM you're getting. So you you know you probably feel that sometimes your alarm goes off when you're in the deepest of sleeps, and that is like torture. I do have some stuff to add here. I want to see if he gets to some of the reasons why it's early. Why is it early? If he doesn't, I'm gonna interject. Life expectancy has also been shown to increase with later start times. So the number one cause of death in teens is road traffic accidents, which have been linked directly to sleep deprivation. When one county in Wyoming changed their start time from 7.25 a.m. to 8.55 a.m., they saw a 70% decrease in traffic accidents in the affected age group. So why do circadian rhythms stray so far in adolescence? The prevailing socio-evolutionary theory right now is that it allows teens and young adults to start gaining their independence from their parents, but in small increments. For several hours a day, kids can operate on their own or with their peer group away from adults, but it's not a full removal from parental supervision. During this stage, they get to practice becoming their own individual. The truth is, only a century ago in America, most schools started around 9 a.m. and 95% of students woke up without an alarm. Now in the U.S., 80% of schools begin before 8.15 a.m. and 50% of those start before 7.00 20 a.m. Not to mention the increasing impact of TVs, computers, and phones in the bedroom. It's no wonder kids are more tired than ever. Yeah. At the end of the day, the evidence is overwhelming that- I don't know, I feel like I'm just before the, you have a screen in your face all the time generation. Uh, smartphones and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like everyone was always tired anyways. So that's why, I mean, it, it can make things worse, but it's not like the biggest reason. Now, it looks like, cause this video is about over, um, isn't said about why schools are earlier. There's a couple reasons, okay, a couple reasons. Um, one is, especially when you go back in time, um, it was expected for in, in a lot of places that someone that's of teenage years needs to work after school. So you have uh, have to like align that with the hours that a lot of work, you know, takes place, which is largely during, uh, you know, daylight hours, afternoon hours, and of course, early evening. And so that has been a big thing. Okay. And a lot of people even today uh, are that same reason. You got people that uh, work and some of it can be to support your family. And that was a big deal. So one of them uh, is that another one actually has to do with transportation. And that is uh, overlapping or uh, extending out start times for buses. So you've got buses and, you know, your school district uses the same buses for uh, elementary school, middle school and uh, and high school. They use the same one. A bus driver usually does all three. Right. They do the high school route, then the junior high route and then the elementary school route. So you can't have those overlaps. There's going to be a longer period of time. Um, I don't know. Maybe you would say that it should almost be flipped because most places you go high school, junior high and then elementary school is the latest. Should that be flipped in some way with the little because then all of a sudden the little kids are getting up too early, but then that could be uh, damaging, too. But if you started everything later, that would push uh, that would likely push, you know, school like for high school or anybody more towards like you'd be ending 5 p.m. plus, which is really difficult then for, you know, uh, young people to be able to work and um, do those other things. So there's a whole bunch of things scheduling wise that would have to change with this, but the science is very clear, kind of like what he's saying.
Later start times around 9 a.m. or so are not only preferred by students, but lead sure. to improvements in basically every single metric we're measuring their progress by in school. In the words of Dr. Walker, who wrote the book Why We Sleep, which was the primary source for this episode, we're too often focused on what sleep is taking away from our teenagers without stopping to think about what it may be adding. I hope we can change. I hope we can break the parent to child transmission of sleep neglect and remove what yeah. the exhausted fatigue there are just, there are other things at play are so that have to be addressed too. starved of. When sleep is abundant, minds flourish. When it's deficient, they don't. I hope this video has been informative and useful, especially if you are a parent or a teacher or someone who manages a school. And if you're a student, send this to your teachers right now. Send this to your administrators and <laughs> let them know. I can't do anything about it, It's sorry. not a joke. Sleep is a huge part of our lives and so important for our intellectual capacities and our physical health. And they would do well to think about that when they start your school. Thanks again for watching make sure you like the video subscribe if you want more and we'll see you next time for some more science okay i got more to say okay so to go in uh, to continue on with the other kind of issues at play like we're saying things like busing and also the need of many uh, students to be able to work um, that could be you know damaging especially in certain socioeconomic communities where uh, the teenagers work and may be partly responsible for being able to provide for their family, like monetarily, you have that, you would see kind of a disproportionate in places, maybe it's higher socioeconomic status, where the uh, student um, is not as reliant, okay, or relied upon for, you know, um, the bills. So you have that going on. Now, another thing I've heard that people will say is simply that students then, if, if school starts earlier, or sorry, later, they'll just, uh, uh, students will just go to bed later. And all of a sudden, instead of, you know, again, if we start school at nine, and you know you're gonna get up at like 8 30 which would be nice if you're you know asleep by you know midnight um but well then that just mean that students just you know push that back you know how in the summertime when so many of us if you're on that kind of schedule like a school schedule high school college whatever you tend to mess up your sleep schedule because you just naturally start being later and later and then and then uh, it totally screws up just because it seems natural to do that you wonder if that will come into play as well so anyways what do you think is the best uh, scenario for this taking in account all of the things that come attached with this with again working after school transportation, um, the using uh, a, a good use of that time to make sure you get good sleep schedules. What do you think is the best way to proceed taking into account all of those factors? All right. Love to hear from you guys. So let me know down in the comments. All right. We'll see you all next time.